So here's a quick tutorial on how to set up uh, Fusion 360 to prep files for the Shape Yoko router. You start off with your design. This is just a plate with four holes and a pocket. Uh, and you want to go into the uh, Manufacture tab. So you go right up there, hit Manufacture, and that gives you all your um, menu items. It's based on a setup, so you want to start by making a new setup. You can um, select the function, milling. Uh, Orientation is a little tricky. I like this one. And you just click it and you can see your XYZ axes are all correct. Uh, you can reorient it if you need to. And uh, you can set sort of the home point anywhere on the work. I've taken to setting it in the center of the work. And now you want to set your stock parameters. So um, the only change I make is I set the top offset to zero. And then that's about all you need to do in the setup. So now I'm going to sort of define the functions. So first one is adaptive clearing, 2D adaptive clearing. And uh, I need to set my tool. So I just select a generic tool and then set the uh, parameters of that. Um, set inches, make it a uh, 1 8 inch bit. And I set the length to one and a half inches, which is the overall length of my bit. And hit OK. And that loads the tool. Once you hit OK, you're all set. It shows uh, sort of a shadow image of your tool. And uh, the next next thing I do is select the geometry. So this is telling the tool where the path is going to go. I select the outer uh, perimeter there and uh, now I set my heights. Uh, generally this defaults to what you need. Um, there are a couple of things we want to select here. Multiple depths is so you're taking it easy on your bit um, and you want to unselect stock to leave. That would be if you're trying to do some finishing. Just hit OK and you've established your toolpath. I want to go in and set up another toolpath which is a pocket for drilling the holes. So again it's remembering my bit. Uh, go for geometry, click, shift click to click multiples select multiples, there you go, and then uh, go up to heights, just check that, and everything is just where it should be, passes, again you want to make sure you select multiple depths, and uh, make sure you deselect stock to leave There we go. Hit OK. And uh, so those are your two basic tool paths and it'll show you um, sort of a, an outline of what that's going to look like. So the next step um, is kind of cool actually. It allows you to simulate um, what your tool is going to do. So you select the entire setup. You go into simulate and then uh, you like to select the tool and make it transparent. You can select the tool path, you can select stock, play around with it however you like it. But then when you hit play, 
this allows you to see the toolpath and just sort of check it to make sure it's okay. So this is what the tool's doing. And right off I'm going to say I made a mistake somewhere because this is cutting way too deep. So I'm going to stop it. Close it. Select that toolpath again. And go and check my passes. And yes, I I selected multiple depths, but it's a it's way too healthy there. So I'm going to select that, turn it to one millimeter, and now it should only make a one millimeter deep cut. And try this again, simulate it, all the same settings, play it. Yeah, that's much better, especially for a one eighth inch mill. Uh, if I went that as deep as it wanted to go, I probably would have snapped it off. So, uh, besides the fact that it's somewhat engaging, it's also a really good idea to watch the entire simulation just because you might have missed something else. Okay, that's my first pass, and it's going to start on my second pass. So this is a three millimeter deep pocket. It's cutting a millimeter at a time, so there are going to be three passes. And that's the second pass. And starting the third pass. And now it's going to go cut my holes. Alright, that's a really basic setup. Checks out pretty well. Um, take a good look at it. Everything seems to be okay. And you go back and select. And uh, now you want to uh, output it to a file that the uh, Shapeyoko can use. So go up to Actions and select Post Process. Um, this is really straightforward. You're just post processing it for the carbide, which is in the drop-down list, is handy. And uh, you can name the file, etc., whatever you want. And hit OK and uh, put it wherever you store your files. I like to keep them in the Fusion 360 files folder on my desktop. And um, hit Save and you're good. Um, so, yeah. I, replace it. It also it generates this text file and automatically opens text at it, which I don't really know what to do with, so I just close it. Um, but that's all you really need. You just load that file on the on the uh, system that's running carbide uh, motion and uh, you're good to go.